Hey uh, YouTubers, Tazman here bringing you a how-to video on how to load multiple versions of RimWorld. Uh, I've been asked via email by a couple people how is it that you can have you know different uh, mod packs like the Hardcore SK or the MVP, the Mod Ver uh, Variety Pack and such. How do you make it so you can actually have more than one and be able to bounce back and forth or something like that if you want to just test them so i decided to make this video to hopefully uh explain to you guys what you do so the first thing you need is there's two directories in windows that you need to mess with in order to do this and first you can go and you can download the hardcore sk uh mod pack or the mvp mod pack or even your own flavor of mods and then what i usually do is uh, back them up by zipping them all together so first thing i do is i will download the mod pack and i've actually put them on a different drive so yours will probably be wherever you've installed rimworld or where you've copied the files to launch it if you don't know it you can always click on the little rimworld star thing you can't really see this, but uh, the RimWorld icon, and then you can actually see the path of the game right there. So G RimWorld. So if I just go to my G drive, uh, you'll see here that I put RimWorld right here. Now, if I double click that, these are the actual files that are in the zip file that you get from uh, the RimWorld download. Uh, now this is just Windows, it might be different in Mac. But what we really care about is this mods folder. So if you click on there, default, it'll only have this core in there, and that's it. Um, I like downloading, oh, excuse me, downloading my mod packs and actually putting them in here with it. So I have the Hardcore SK uh, 2.5 Cataclysm, <laughs> and the Marad, my guy, I can't talk today. Mod Variety Pack 1.26, which I believe are the latest of both of those. And then I have the one that I use for my Taz Play, which is my own little uh, selection of mods, as you can see here. So this is the first thing you need to do is actually get to this point where you've actually got your things. Or if you've got your own mod pack, then just go ahead and put the mods in here. And then... Um, what I do is go ahead and highlight everything and then unselect those guys and then I zip it up and call it tazplay.rar. Alright, so anyway, um, once you've done that, the other thing you need is like if we go into the mod, mod variety pack, and I need to move this guy right over here. <laughs> right, let's just make it fit a little better. Uh, so in the mod variety pack, you'll see that you actually have this readme. Um, which tells you basically that you have this one that goes into say this is uh, you can double click this I don't ever trust these I'm not saying this is malicious but I like doing it myself and knowing what's going on myself but you can actually view the file here and see what exactly it's doing so as long as it's a bat file or uh, something that I can actually look and see what it's doing I'm usually okay with it all right, so anyway, what I like to do is, for example, these mods right here, these are all the mods, and what I would do is, let's say we wanted to launch the mod variety pack. So we're gonna get rid of all the Taz Play ones. And hit delete, like a show. And then if we go in here to our thing, we just simply do Control A to select it all and drag it into our thing now notice I did keep the core because uh, this is the core game this is the one that the game comes with and you definitely want to keep that one but so we're just gonna wait a minute and you'll see once this is all done it'll just populate and we'll have all the mods in there so there is one other thing that we'll want to do uh, come on hurry up <laughs> We also, and we're going to open up this one just so I can show you what the, the ones look like. Okay, so there we go. Now it's actually moving the items. 
into this directory. And, it, oh, I actually copied core into there just in case. We're going to go ahead and skip that one. You won't have core in there. I actually put core in, in the Maraud Variety Pack one. So also, let's just launch this one so you can see that it's kind of similar. But you'll notice there's actually two folders. Uh, so there's this, there's the mod, and the other in this one. So the mods obviously are all your mods. You just drag them where I was showing you. The other is the next thing. So this one kind of has, uh, diff these are other mods actually. Uh, where's the one I was looking for then? Oh, this is the other file. So in mod, uh, in the SK 2.5 Cataclysm, they actually put the mods config right here, but you have to do something special with that one. Uh, and with the mod variety pack, they actually have it in this save data, save data config one, and there's the mods config. So where we put those files is we go to, and we type the parenthesis, or not parenthesis, the percent symbol, and we type app data, and then another print uh, percent symbol, then backslash and dot dot. Now this is an environmental variable or a system variable for your computer. This will take you to where your profile's app data is. And as you can see, my app data is in C users, Tasman, FB Consulting, blah, blah, blah. That's just nothing really. That's just a domain. Uh, and then app data. So anyway, once you do that, it's the default will actually take you to this roaming one when you just do app data. The dot dot will actually take us back one and we want to go in this local low. So as you can see here in local low, we have one directory called Ludian. I think that's how you pronounce it. I've never actually heard it pronounced. So I'm just going to say Ludian Studios. If you double click that, you'll have RimWorld and then you'll have this config. And oh, I closed that other one. That's okay. Uh, and then what you do is you just put the mods config in here. Now, I will show you what that actually does. But what I wanted to point out is I actually have multiple ones here. So for example, I have the MVP one and I have the Taz Play one. And then I have this default one. And what I like to do so that I can actually have all the mods, this basically is the order of the mods and what mods you want loaded. Um, and so I like to keep them separate. Like if we open this guy up, you'll see, oh, I have to move this over. You can see that here's the mods I have, uh, the build number, and these are the mods. So first it loads core, then it loads the EDB mod order. This is one that actually allows you to change the order. Then it uses the community core library, the community core library vanilla tweaks, the EDB interface, EDB prepare carefully, hospitality, and clock. So um, that's that's what this file basically is. It's just the order of the mods. And you'll want to keep the order of the mods the same that the mod pack uh, designer intended you to. So if we click on, for example, this one, our MVP, you'll see that they have a specific order. And the reason they do this is because if, let's say, I load this mod, well, not that mod, let's say Combat Realism or something like that, it's going to load this, and then let's say later there's a different enhancement to Combat Realism. If we load the enhancement first, this will override that one. So hopefully that's kind of clear as mud. <laughs> uh, but, so that's, that's basically what that is. So I like to... Um, Take the original one, for example. This is actually my Taz plate one, and maybe just put a dot .org or something like that, just to let me know that this is it. Now, we just copied all the MVP mods over, so we're going to actually take this one, and what I'll usually do is just control, hold down control and move it into the same directory, and this will just create a copy. And then we simply get rid of everything from that dot MVP all the way to that dot XML. And now when we launch RimWorld, it will actually access this one, which tells it all about the mods from the MVP mod pack. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch RimWorld and show you exactly what that does. So uh, I will see you guys in a minute. 
Okay, so here we are in the game. And if we click the button mods here, you'll see that it automatically is showing us all those mods. And it's in the right order that uh, it wanted us to load. Now the mod, uh, normally if you don't have the EDB mod loader, it'll just be one line and you can just uncheck or check them. But the EDB mod order actually gives us these two panes where we can actually say, oh, I, well, let's just do the bottom one so we don't have to move it and everything. So let's say, oh, I don't want auto seller in there. I simply click that and now auto seller. Once I close this, it'll reload all the mods that are in this side and not load up auto seller. So it will not be available. And if we wanted auto sailor, or if we have another mod that we know will work with this, but it's not standard, we can just copy it into the mod directory. We can select it here. We can click add and it'll default, put it at the very bottom. Now, if we want to move this in a different order, we need this. For example, we were talking about the combat realism. If we needed this to load before some other mod specifically, we just select it and we can move it just like that. We're going to put it right back where it was because that's where the mod designer wanted it. So once you've done that, you hit close, it'll reload all the mods. You can create your world, you can play your colony and all that stuff. And Bob's your uncle. So there you go, guys. I really hope this helped. Hopefully I was clear and didn't uh, make anything too confusing. Feel free to leave comments down below on suggestions or if there's other little things you want uh, me to do a, a video about. For example, I've seen in the forums a lot of questions about how to change your colonist's full name without having, for example, the EDB prepare carefully or something like that. And the save files are just XML. You just have to understand a little bit about how to read them and then you're pretty good. Um, now, I will warn you, modifying your save files can corrupt your game. Um, so it's always good, definitely good to make a backup of it. But, uh, you know, as with anything, you know, messing with it can always cause issues. So always back up stuff. Anyway, I ramble on. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Like I said, hopefully you found this uh uh, this little tutorial or help video um, informational and good if you did it would help tremendously if you left a thumbs up down below comment subscribe follow me on twitter and until next time i'll be seeing you later bye